Name someone's villains who get more smashed than the Hulks. The green mean fighting machine may not have the more popular rogues gallery, especially when it comes to people like Batman and Spider-Man, but if they are going up against the Hulk, they are likely some of the most powerful. To take a punch from this jolly green giant is an impressive feat, given that most of his punches could knock over building. From beasts to brains, the Hulk's villains definitely know how to take him head on, or at least exploit his weaknesses. Let's take a look at some Hulk villains who have yet to appear in the MCU right now. There have been hints to several villains from the comics in the MCU, and heck, sometimes there have been full-blown appearances. However, they tend to leave out the villain part, and therefore we don't count those. One antagonist who has appeared several times throughout the MCU, just not in his full glory is Thaddeus Thunderbolt Ross. Yes, I know, William Hurt played him in multiple phases of the MCU, but Thaddeus Ross in the comics is better known to some as the Red Hulk. It's even true that sometimes the Red Hulk and the Not Red One work together, but all too many a times they are at odds. Ross in his Red Hulk version is one of few villains who can actually rival the strength of Bruce, and in many instances exceed it. Don't you get it? You're old news. William Hurt has unfortunately passed away, so it's unclear what the fate of Thaddeus Thunderbolt Ross will be in the MCU, but since his first appearance everyone has been hoping the Red Monster would appear. There is another member of the Ross family still kicking around somewhere, who has some Hulk-like background in her comic appearances as of late as well. In one way or another, especially with rumors of a Thunderbolts film in the pipeline, I hope we see the Red Hulk come out to play very soon. Another villain who's basically at cameo status in the MCU, but has yet to fully appear, is a villain known as the Leader. Samuel Stearns was a scientist who in his experiments warped the size of his head and therefore his capacity for intelligence. He is one of few Hulk villains who uses his mind instead of his fists against the hulking green giant. Now, Samuel Stearns has appeared in the MCU, way back in The Incredible Hulk, the second film in Phase 1 played by Tim Blake Nelson. He even helped Bruce try to take the gamma radiation out of his blood, and became almost obsessed with it. He then helped create perhaps the most iconic Hulk villain in Abomination. During this creation, Stearns was involved in an accident that left his head cut open, with Bruce's gamma irradiated blood pouring in. His head slowly began to reform, and Stearns smiled at the camera and poof, that was it. That was the last we saw of Samuel Stearns in the MCU, which means he has got to still be out there. The leader could be a powerful villain for the Hulk to take on in the coming phases, and he's had plenty of time to prep. How does the saying go? You are your own worst enemy. I always thought it was you, specifically from a dystopian future shrouded in the aftermath of a nuclear war and grown to incredible strength, are your own worst enemy. Since we're bringing in variants to be some of the greatest enemies of our heroes, for reference see the many Doctor Stranges, why not bring in one of the Hulks that gives everybody nightmares? The Maestro is often thought of as the most evil version of the Hulk, and definitely one of the most powerful. In a dystopian future covered in gamma radiation, Bruce Banner thrived in this apocalyptic wasteland. His body absorbed the gamma radiation around him, increasing his strength tenfold, and also growing a sweet white beard. This buff uncle of a villain would be a nightmare for the Hulk to face off against in the MCU. A Secret Wars scenario that brings about a multiversal war could be the perfect place to introduce the Maestro and neutralize the muscle of the Avengers. Plus, with a name like the Maestro and all the bling, Bruce might run and hide just because he's not as cool. Bye Beast is yet another one more or less confirmed to live in the MCU, but has yet to actually show up. On Sakaar in Thor Ragnarok, the Grandmaster had several statues built on a large tower dedicated to past champions. These included famous Marvel characters such as Beta Ray Bill and Man-Thing. However, one glorious statue displayed not one head but two in the form of the Hulk villain Bye Beast. Bye Beast is a double threat for sure, as one of his brains has become skilled with fighting knowledge, while the other has become skilled with, well, regular knowledge. Bye Beast is actually an android whose heads are stacked bizarrely on top of one another. However, his android strength and incredible fighting ability allow him to go toe to toe with the Hulk. Not only that, but you know he's legit since he was a champion of the Grand Master on Sakaar already. So I can't wait for two former champions to face off in the MCU. That is, unless, of course, Hulk became champion by killing... Oh no.
There are plenty of heroes and villains who have mastered the manipulation of electricity, but none have a cooler name than Zax. Okay, well, Electro is pretty sweet. Storm. Zax sounds kind of lame. But, lame or not, he's found a unique way to square off with the Rage Machine. Zax is a creature of pure energy. He does not have a physical form and instead is just a face on a mass of electrical beams of light. He has the ability to concentrate, absorb, and store incredible amounts of power and unleash it in similar ways to characters like Electro. The difference here is there's no man to punch behind the shock and awe. He's a very powerful being and his ability to grow in size makes him an excellent foil for the Hulk. Zax! Consume! Ah! He can punch all he wants, but it's likely that Bruce's brain would have to take over to find a way to bring Zax down. Personally, I would just try making fun of his name until he gives up and goes home. Some of the coolest villains share their comic history with actual history. Loki, the god of mischief, comes directly from Norse mythology. We are seeing it unfold with the Djinn in Miss Marvel. The Wendigo is a Hulk villain who shares its lore with Canadian mythology. The Wendigo is a cursed man turned into a huge man-eating monster, reminiscent of a werewolf with white fur. The Wendigo is the curse, not the man, however, meaning that several different people have been inhabited by this curse throughout history, allowing the Wendigo to appear in any time period. This would be an interesting Hulk villain to introduce into the MCU. The Hulk is a force of nature, but the Wendigo delves into curses and witchcraft, which we have begun to explore more thoroughly in the MCU. A supernatural legend is unlike almost any other Hulk villain, posing a challenge for the green giant and nightmare fuel for all the kids in the MCU. Ancient leaders and commanders of armies are definitely a match for the Hulk. There is perhaps no greater example than the Roman Emperor Tyrannus. In ancient Rome, this ruthless leader found a magical fountain that gave him eternal youth. It allowed him to unlock his greatest power, time. With this new time, he perfected several facets of his villainous career. He became a master of science and created new weapons and technology that he in turn mastered. The magical fountain gave him psychic and magical abilities that he also used his time to perfect. All of this preparation really made someone who was once just a mortal man capable of going up against the Hulk. The revelation of the Eternal showed us that certain characters have been around for thousands and thousands of years. Seeing an ancient ruler like Tyrannus finally emerge to challenge the strongest Avenger could be a very cool twist to throw into the MCU. Goldbug is maybe the most one-dimensional villain on this list, but hey, if the MCU is bringing in characters like the Leaper and not making them overly ridiculous, why not give him a chance? When I say cheesy, I mean like announcing your own name when you arrive to a fight cheesy. Goldbug is just a tech wizard with poor morals and loves gold. He uses it to form suits and is capable of fighting the Hulk, though not for very long. Originally, he was actually a Luke Cage villain, but would go on to use the Hulk in his search for the city of El Dorado. He would eventually team up with the Hulk in order to fight off the larger threat in Tyrannus. Goldbug does not have much character to him, but that's what the MCU does best. If he doesn't show up as any kind of main villain, he could at least be the low-level criminal robbing Fort Knox that the Hulk put in prison long before the main title sequence even rolls. Moonstone has a long and complex history that is riddled with bad. He's been a part of various supervillain teams including the Thunderbolts and the Masters of Evil. Get it? They've mastered it. The evil. Anyway, she's even been invited to the Dark Avengers to fulfill the Miss Marvel role on the team. Dr. Carla Sofin was a psychiatrist who stole a powerful Kree gem from one of her patients, who stole it from the original Moonstone. The alien rock gives her flight, intangibility, and incredible strength, clearly as she is able to match the muscles with the Hulk. She has fought several heroes as Moonstone, including Captain America and Monica Rambeau, but no opponent quite matches her fighting prowess like the Hulk. A Captain Marvel-like figure who serves the dark side could be very good for the MCU, and having her take on the Hulk first would really cement her place as a powerhouse in the universe. With all these teams forming under our very noses, whether they be dark, young, or, uh, thunderbolty, it's very possible we get a Moonstone introduction sooner rather than later. The next Hulk villain we need to see is the Missing Link. No, Zelda, he's fine, go check the woods or something. The Missing Link, while having a wholly unoriginal name, is actually a sympathetic and interesting Hulk foe. An atomic test created a crack in the ground and from it emerged the Missing Link, a centuries-old creature who had been living beneath the planet's surface. The radioactivity from the test mutated this beast into a horrifying and powerful monster, capable of doing battle with the Hulk. Their strength is fairly equal, and the two had a fight that nearly destroyed Manhattan. The Missing Link, however, as I said, is a sympathetic creature. 
Bruce does not want to hurt people, but sometimes he becomes the Hulk and loses control, in the same way that Missing Link has very little control over his power. His radioactivity is poisonous to beings surrounding him, but he does not want this to happen. He does not enjoy hurting people, but this accident that created him causes him to do so. Overall, I just want to see him in the MCU because if I see Missing Link appear from a crack in the ground, I know Mole Man can't be far behind. Don't you hate it when relationships don't work out? We've already mentioned that Betty Ross does in the comics go on to become a really mean version of the Red Hulk, but before that, Betty Ross became a villain known as Harpy. Betty was captured by Moda and was used as a human test subject for gamma radiation experiments. These turned her into a giant green bird-like creature with wings, feathers, and talons. Her talons are said to be so sharp that they can actually pierce the Hulk's skin. She also has the ability to fire powerful beams from her hands, making her a dominating force easily capable of defeating the Hulk. I'm dying for a Betty Ross comeback, given that she's still somewhere in the MCU like Samuel Stearns. They brought back Thaddeus Ross for Civil War, and now Emil Blonsky in Shang-Chi, showing us that the MCU is finally starting to acknowledge the existence of the Incredible Hulk film. This clears a path for Betty, who could return as one of Bruce's greatest foes yet. Geez, between this and whatever's going on with Thor and Jane, they're gonna need to start a support group. You ever hear of the popular Hulk villain, Glob? Did you just call me... Glob? No, no, I said Glob, not Blob. How about Swamp Thing? Yeah, that's right, we have yet another straight-up ripoff from DC to Marvel, or vice versa. Truthfully, though, both characters owe their designs to comic book monsters of old. Glob is literally just a mess of an amalgamation of mud, swamp slime, seaweed, and many other gross disturbing things clumping together and forming one giant monster. This swamp monster is much less heroic than DC's Swamp Thing, as his host was an escaped criminal who drowned in radioactive material, causing his form to change into a heaping mess of a creature. See Sandman, you don't have it so bad. Glob feels almost no pain, and large punches do not phase him, which explains why he is able to take on someone like the Hulk. His strength is definitely increased, and Bruce likely just gets frustrated when he gets tangled in Glob's vines. Overall, the MCU could definitely send Bruce on an all-expenses-paid vacation to Louisiana in the MCU, where he runs across an escaped criminal turned into a swamp creature named Glob. Oddly specific, but hey, it could happen. These villains can all certainly take a punch, and given that the amount of hulks in the MCU are about to double, they're going to need that. Which of these villains do you hope appears in the MCU?